Welcome to Recovery Today with Candy Rose and Friends, a program to reach those hurting from addictions. Barbara, Becky, and Candy, due to the addiction epidemic, teach the Word of God and then feature addiction-free testimonies. Drugs and alcohol are killing people every day, destroying families, and affecting precious children. They know firsthand Jesus is the answer and can bring freedom and restoration to lives and homes. Hi, friends. Whether you're watching by TV or you're listening by radio or podcast, welcome to Recovery Today with Candy Rose. That's me. And friends, Becky Brewer. Hello. And Barbara Ulmer. Hi. They are on our board, and so is Dr. Mike McFarland, mm -hmm. our vice president. Every week, we bring you a topic pertaining to recovery or just even Christian living, for that matter. And then we feature addiction-free testimonies. And today's topic is holiness. Holiness in this next verse refers to our conduct, our behavior. 1 Peter 1, 14 and 15 in the Amplified Version says, Live as obedient children of God. Do not be conformed to the evil desires which governed you in the ignorance before you knew the requirements and transforming power of the good news regarding salvation. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. Be set apart from the world by your godly character and moral courage. Because it is written, you shall be holy, set apart, for I am holy. That's good. And then the Hebrew word for holy is kadosh, meaning to be set apart, set apart from the rest, set apart for a purpose. Romans 12, 1 and 2 in the Amplified Version says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God which is your rational, logical, and intelligent act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of the mind, focusing on the godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Hebrews twelve fourteen in the King James Version says, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That verse should make us want to walk the walk so that we can see Jesus someday, the one who loves us and died on the cross for us. First John 2, 6, Amplified Version, Whoever says he lives in Christ, that is, whoever says he has accepted him as God and Savior, ought as a moral obligation to walk and to conduct himself just as he walked and conducted himself. That verse says, if we call ourselves a Christian, we should, by our own behavior, try to be more like our example, which is Jesus. Amen. Yeah. So the thing is, though, is, is that many people just say, well, I'm not perfect, and Jesus doesn't expect me to be perfect. Jesus does expect you to walk to walk. The Bible says, if you, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you continue in my word, there is a walking it out. There is not just talking it and not, not just believing it, but there's a, a repentance. Repentance means being willing to turn. So when you do mess up and you ask God uh, and to forgive you, he will. First John 1, 9. But the thing is, uh, we don't use that as a, an excuse then to just go ahead and live any way we want to. God is holy. We, we, you know, you talked about a reverence. Yeah, we, we don't need to be just like, well, I can do whatever I want to now that I'm saved. No, that's, that's the wrong mindset. Mm -hmm. Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins, not to continue in them. Hi, my name is Sierra. Um, so I was born and raised in LA, California. Um, both my parents have died from addiction. My dad died from heroin overdose. Um, when I was 10, uh, he started molesting me and would sell me to other men for heroin. Uh, my mom died of alcohol cirrhosis of the liver and she passed in my arms. Um, I was in a gang from 10 to 15. Um, all four of my kids I did open adoption with because of my own addiction. 
Um, a lot of my life has been rape and abuse. Um, seven years ago, I was on the news in Pawnee, Oklahoma for being tortured with power tools and beat up really bad. Um, before I came here to 633 Recovery, I was living in my car. Um, I was on meth and um, I was in really bad shape. Um, but thank God, God is good, right? Um, so since I've been here the past six months, um, God saved my life. Um, I teach class now on your identity through Christ. Um, I am leader, and um, after I graduate this year-long program, I want to be a counselor and help the other girls and um, show them that no matter what hardships you go through, God's always by your side, and you will get through it. And just believe in Him, and, you know, really, He has all the glory in my testimony because I want to be here without Him. So, uh, Candy wanted me to go a little more into detail about being tortured with the power tools. Um, my ex would take my fingers and toes, like he was going to cut my fingers and toes off. Um, you know, I was raped and tortured for two weeks every day. Um, at the end, me and my boys, we ran from him and hid in a dumpster and called the police from there. So, it was really horrific what I went through. But um, I wouldn't change it for anything because it just made me stronger today and it made me be able to help others. And I would also really like to thank Heather and Kane um, for this place, you know, and for teaching me about God and um, Teresa for supporting me. And I just I love this program. I'm Shay. I'm from Red Oak, Oklahoma, and I'm 26 years old. Um, I've been in addiction since I was 17. I was raised in a family of addicts. Um, in 2020, I had my first kid. In 21, I had my second kid. And they are currently both in a guardianship. Um, after that, my life really spiraled down uh, fast. Um, last year, um, I became a seller, um, became a dealer of fentanyl. Um, I started shooting. And at the end of it, I started dabbling in fentanyl myself. Um, I had fell out once. Um, I was raped, and I came a prostitute. Um, in December of 2023, I finally surrendered my life and came to 633. And here I have begun to learn to love myself and love other people and change my life. And without Jesus, that wouldn't happen. And I would like to thank... Teresa Shackelford for answering the phone the day I called to get in here. And I would also like to thank Heather Riggs for becoming a mother that I needed. And she supports me in everything I do. And Kane Rigg also. He supports me in everything I do. And I don't know where I would be without them. Thank you. My name's Lee Turpin. Uh, I spent 34 years in active addiction. I came from a good home, a good family. Uh, parents had a lot of expectations for me, I reckon, but uh, I had other plans. Uh, I spent, like I said, 34 years in active addiction. I've done pretty much every drug known to man, every way known to do it. Uh, all the problems that I had, everything, it just led the road to nowhere. I've I, I lost good jobs. I lost my car. I lost my home, license, uh, lost it all. I ended up uh, homeless and in the shelters, the streets, and the shelters, and I ended up six three three recovery and met Kane Riggs there, and uh, I did a year long discipleship program, and Jesus Christ changed my life. I uh, now I work for six three three recovery. I uh, run the transition house here. It's program for men who have finished the program and not ready to get out on their own yet uh, I oversee the, the house there where they stay, help them get back uh, acclimated to society going out holding steady jobs and things I run a homeless ministry myself, I go back into the streets now, I go uh, back over to the river and to the camps I go back where it all come from, where I come from 
uh, pulled four people out so far. We, we're changing lives out there one day at a time. That's pretty much my story. Hi, uh, I'm Jarrah Eaton. I uh, grew up in a single-parent household. It was just me and my mom, uh, only child, single mom. Had a good childhood, really. And when my mom passed away, that's when things started getting bad. Um, in 2013, on the 11th of August, 2013, I gave birth to my daughter. And then on the 27th of August, 2013, I lost my mom. So that kind of just spiraled me out of control. That's when my addiction started. So since 2013, I've been in and out of addiction and lost everything, including my kids. Uh, Now, for the first time in my life, I know what love is, and that's from being here at 633. Heather Riggs and Kane Riggs and Teresa Shackelford and all and all the staff here really have showed me how to live life the right way. Um, and the love of God. I've been in and out of church here and there throughout my life, but I never knew God the way I know God now. And it's more about a relationship with him than it is anything here. And that's really what 633 is about for me is learning how to live life the right way and to love God and to have that relationship with him. And I know through him that all the things I've lost, he'll restore back to me. So I, in my addiction in 2019, my kids went to live with their dad, which was pretty hard for me because I didn't have anywhere to stay. So I was pretty much homeless at that point, just staying from couch to couch. So I let my kids go stay with their dad. Well, in the meantime, about 2021, my husband passed away which led me into a deeper addiction. Um, My kids are with his mother, and I'm working to get them back now, um, which it's looking great. I get visitation now, you know, thank the Lord, you know, all the glory be to him. Um, (laughs) I'm forever grateful for my mother-in-law because she's took care of my kids when I couldn't. And, um, And for my family that supported me, when I thought I didn't have anybody, there are people there that love you. Um, my name is Robert Dotson, <clears throat> 43 years old, from Hevener, Oklahoma. I got a story. Story. Um, I was in when I had a good childhood. I was about 14 years old. I started smoking pot, drinking, drinking alcohol, and shooting methamphetamines. <clears throat> and from then. From then, it led on to uh, to prison. I did 14 years in prison uh, because of my choices. Um, while I was in prison, I I got affiliated with a certain organization. <clears throat> I um, I did what I had to do to make it to the top, and and man, my choices took everything everything away from me. My my family, my my everything I ever had, my family, my, my freedom, prison, 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 bad choices, took everything I ever had, but <clears throat> then I got in trouble this last time after I got out, I got in trouble, and, and I was sick and tired of being sick and tired, so I told my lawyer, I said, drug court, you know, get me in drug court, I'm ready for a change, and he said, he said, Robert, we've tried this before. We've tried this before. And where did it end you up at? It ended me back up in prison. But um, this time is different, is what I told him. <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, I got to the point to where I didn't want to live. I, I mean, I didn't care about myself, didn't care about nobody else. But um, today, drug, well, drug court put me in Kane, Kane's, Kane Riggs' front door right here at 633 Recovery. And um, <clears throat> the, I come out to an NA meeting one night. The next the guys told me, they said, hey, we got a Bible study at 7 o'clock in the morning. Well, I come out that, that morning, and Kane just so happened to be speaking. And um, <clears throat> after it was over with, I, I guess it was, I know now, at the time I didn't know, but it was the Holy Spirit getting on me and telling me, hey, hey, you need to stick around here. You need to stick around and talk with Kane. <clears throat> so I did. And uh, 
Man, I walked up there. I held up my hand. I shook his hand. Told him my name, and his he kind of his eyes got a little big, and he said, "Son, I've been waiting for you, waiting on you for a long time." And as he was reaching out to shake my hand, is when he said that, and he jerked me towards him and wrapped me wrapped me up in like a bear hug, head hold, and you know. Me being living the life that I lived, I never let nobody to put their hands on me like in any type of way. <clears throat> I tried to wiggle away from him, but uh, hey, he's he's a pretty he's a pretty stout guy, you know. And uh, he he just went to. I thought he was praying for me, but he was speaking God's words into my life. And uh, he started crying. I started crying. And before it was all over with. You know, I I surrendered my life right then and there. And uh, me. I never knew anything about Jesus. I know my mom took us to church on, and on holidays, Sundays, uh, Mother's Day, Easter, stuff like that. But I never knew anything about <laughs> about the church, about about Jesus, nothing. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> since then, I, I. Um, you know, in the Bible it says we cannot serve two masters, and and that brotherhood that I was with, that was one of my masters, and uh, I went and did what I had to do to get out, to get out, and I got a blessing on getting out. You know, um, they told me, hey, if you're really, if that's really what you're doing, how could we knock you? You know, how could we, how could we not say no? So, you know, today <clears throat> I've got. I've got my house. I got a really nice house. I got a really great job. I got my family back together. I've got 14 months clean and sober. And every bit of all, everything that I've got going on today, my job, my house, my sobriety, everything come from right here at this place. You know, God, through this place, God changed my life so much, so much. And today, I know that I can't do it. I can't do it by myself. But with God, all things are possible. My name is Donald. I'm 32 years old. I uh, spent 16 years in active drug uh, and alcohol addiction. Um, I grew up going to church, and uh, I knew about God, but I didn't know God. Uh, we'd go to church, and things were different when we'd be at, when we'd come home from church, and uh, and there was a. Uh, man that was in our life that was uh he was uh se- he sexually abused us and uh at about 13 uh, my mom and him separated and uh my mom went down the down the road of addiction and uh i followed in her footsteps so at the age of 13 i took my first drink around the age of 14 i took my first pill and it just went from there so i pretty much been uh living on my own from uh from the age of 14 till, uh, till I mean, pretty much my whole childhood, I was, I was on my own in my teen years. I was on my own, getting to run around, do what I want, when I want. And uh, by the age of uh, 21, I ended up getting married. Uh, had a set of twins, a uh, boy and a girl. And three years later, I had my third, my third child. And uh, in 2017, uh, I was so de- down deep in the in the dark that I ended up losing them. Ended up losing my kids because of the drugs and alcohol. Um, I tried time and time again to get help. Uh, I was going to rehabs. Uh, I've been to four different treatment centers, and uh, 633 is the fourth one I walked into in 2021. And uh, my life changed at that point. Um, I graduated in 2022, and uh, I knew what I needed to be doing after I graduated, but I ended up not listening to God, and I went back out, and I went back out for four months. And uh, about four months in, I, I fell back into my the drinking, and I come back to 633, and... Uh, I've got about 15 months clean and sober uh, today, and uh, God has restored everything that I've lost, uh, most part of everything that I've lost. Uh, I've got I've got a car now, which I haven't had since the 2017, and a house. Uh, and God put my put my son back in my life. He's living with me full time now, and uh, I've got two girls that 
that will be coming home. And uh, God's just, he, he's turned my life around. And, and I'm thankful for this place. Um, and now I'm a staff member at 633. And uh, God's just doing great things. Well, for this now, we'd like to lead you in a prayer. You may be sitting there thinking, well, I don't think I can be holy. Well, you can. Because <laughs> Jesus, the blood of Jesus, yes. cleanses us from all sin. When we sincerely ask him to come into our heart and really mean it, the Holy Spirit comes in and gives us the power. And we can walk the walk. Not one of us sitting here uh, are, are good in our own selves. It's because we right, Jesus yes. to forgive us. And because he's forgiven us, we can now walk the walk. That's good. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to say again, yes, we're not perfect, but you know, Christians don't intentionally sin. I'm, I I get so tired of hearing preachers on TV just say, they say, just say this prayer, and they don't tell you you need to repent and turn from your sins, leave your old lifestyle behind. Then they give the people a false sense of security. They think if they just say the prayer. But if you say the prayer with us and you mean it, holy, and you're willing to leave that old life behind, and which is repent and start walking towards God and, and, and letting him guide you, you can have that new life. And yeah. you can have the power. That's so good. we're going to lead you in a prayer. Just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus forgive me of my sin. Forgive, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. I want to live for you. I want to live for you. With my whole heart. With, with my whole heart. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Never giving up on me. Never, Never giving, giving up on me. I'm willing. I'm willing to leave the old life behind. To leave the old life behind. Live for you, Jesus. And live, live for, for you, you Jesus. With my whole heart. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey everyone, my name is Alan Coker and I'm the director of Shalom Recovery Centers in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We offer nine month residential drug and alcohol treatment for both men and women. Our program is kind of like a transitional living program where people go and work jobs and try to get introduced back into regular life while they're recovering from drugs and alcohol. And we are a faith-based program. We believe in Jesus Christ, and we focus on a relationship with him as the basis of a long-term recovery. So if you are in need or if you know of someone in need, feel free to reach out to us and let us know. We look forward to serving you. Thank you. My name is Tim Bumpus. This is my beautiful wife, Elizabeth, and our good-looking son, Brad. And um, we run a uh, treatment center, center to help people get their life together. Uh, we have one center, which is for men, and uh, called the Gideon House. Then we have a place called the Esther House, which is uh, a pregnancy center and for women without kids. And then we have a Living Waters uh, Recovery Center, which is for mothers with their children. Give us a call, 870-523-8413. Hello, my name is Becky Brewer, and I have a ministry more than a mugshot. And I have that ministry because I was incarcerated in five states across the country. I now do a recovery meeting at Lakeview Assembly of God in Hot Springs, Arkansas, every Monday night from 530 to 630. And I do this. It's biblical. We put the word of God in our everyday life. We apply the word of God to recovery uh, and how to break free. It's break free recovery group. Monday night, Lakeview Assembly of God, 5.30 to 6.30. Come join us, and let's share freedom through Christ together. Thank you. Addictions. Addictions of all types are killing precious people. Overdose of opioids is on the rise. Prescription drugs and alcohol cause families to be torn apart. Everyone suffers, including the children, especially the children. If you or a loved one want help, go to addictionfaithprograms.com to find faith-based resources. There is help. There is hope. 
Addiction Free Ministry presents powerful resources written by its CEO, Candy Rose. Her autobiography, Spirits of Seduction, proves Christ can transform any lifestyle from X rated to G rated. Candy Rose believes testimonies build faith, encouraging others they too can have that new life in Christ. Go to Amazon.com or their website, AddictionFreeMinistry.com, to receive these life changing resources for yourself or a loved one. There is help, there is hope. Oh, uh, God's put it on our heart to help men and women. You know, when we got clean and sober, we wanted everybody that we know to get clean and sober. And so that's been our mission is that uh, we want to see people come off the streets. We want them clean and sober. And so we know that Jesus is the, he's the only way to do that. And so Jesus is the answer. Uh, now we have uh, what is now 633, and uh, we, it's a property with 92 beds. It's a very nice facility. You know, we're going from right now from 18 beds to 92 beds. Uh, we'll have 60 beds for men. We'll have 16 transitional living beds and 16 beds for women. And, you know, we, we got that place on faith. You know, we didn't have the money. We just began to pray and begin to believe. And, you know, God makes the impossible possible. And so we're just excited about the things that God's doing in recovery. Hello, my name is Danny Stone. I'm the co-founder of Restoration Hope with my mother, Sheila Stone. We are a faith-based ministry that helps men that's coming out of prison and also off the streets to find Jesus. We're mainly a discipleship program. We like to say um, instead of prison to streets, we go prison to praise. And through the love of Jesus Christ, we turn a mess into a message. Right now, we ask people to partner up with us. We just got a new building. We have 30 more beds we're about to add. Right now, we have 55 men in our program, and we want to add that. So we're just asking people that might want to partner up with us to look us up at www.restorationofhopes.com. In the name of Jesus, we love you. Thank you. Save me, oh God, my throat is sore From calling out through those evil doors Places I've been and the things I've done I'm tired of being on the run I'm tired of being on the run Hear me, oh God, as I cry for help Evil all around me wants to take me out Evil all around me wants to take me out My eyes are hurting from the evil I've seen That's been in my life and surrounded me My body's in pain, I have nothing to gain As I run from your calling, it's all in vain As I run from your calling, it's all in vain Hear me, oh God, as I cry for help Evil all around me wants to take me out Evil all around me wants to take me out Forgive me, oh God, for the evil I've done. The straight and narrow is what I want to run. Looking over my shoulder, no more I'm done. Hello, friends. Thank you for joining our show today, Recovery Today with Candy Rose and Friends. Barbara, Becky, and I thank you. And we hope you'll come back every week if you can. Our TV show airs not only across the United States, but also worldwide, 200 nations, and also podcasts, and radio. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do we.